I wanted to talk a little bit about our fellowship today. This is an amusement park, actually, and it's a house of mirrors. A fool has no delight in understanding other than what they need to happen for their own personal happiness, Proverbs 18, 2. Everything a fool thinks about in their judgments only has to do with their own personal happiness, not being their brother's keeper, right? That was Cain's problem. So this is my father-in-law, Ernie Nevers. Some people think he's the best NFL player, but he definitely got awarded the best college player in many arenas. So what does a college, his father boasts about his famous coach, Pop Warner. And Pop Warner did this all the time with him. Got him to make good judgments. It's joy to the just to do judgment, right? Reproof in, of instruction is a way of life. Turns on NFL players like turn on, turn on, turn on. Reproof and correction, turn on, turn on, turn on. Wisdom and understanding and knowledge, they're all about it. So <laughs> we were actually talking about the wide, wide world of fear and control. Man, I'm gonna have to maybe make a picture of this particular scripture. I wish I would have, I might have to walk in the house because I really want to talk about it. I don't think I, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull it up. But one of my friends, again, gave a scripture in the Psalms. And I think it might be maybe Psalm 84, Psalm 82, Betty Lou. I'll put it in the comment, okay, so you can read it. But it's all about how God would have given you gold in every trial. Everything could have always worked for your good and you could be living with a pile of gold and wisdom and understanding and revelation because that was always God's will for your life, right? But you had no delight in understanding. You plugged your ears. You, you put hand, your hands over your eyes. So you only see what the natural man sees and what the natural man hears without the Lord, right? Because Jesus is the one who gives us the ability to see past what we can see, past what we can't hear, past what we can hear. And without that, we're just kind of stuck in playing out the, the life of Cain in the movie of our life, not the life of Abel. We've been talking a lot about that too, because people that don't make inner judgments about the flesh and the spirit, Romans 8, 2, it's a joy to the just to do judgment. The robbery of the wicked will slay them because they do refuse to make judgments. Um, so one of the things we were talking about is having a willfully stupid spirit, willful ignorance, dumb spirit. And the dumb thing is actually not being willing to touch our fears and unbelief and not being willing to go into the battle of our own soul, of our own personal battle against the flesh and the spirit, right? Because that's the only real battle there is. So everybody gets involved in everything else that doesn't matter. Because the only thing that matters is that we get understanding to the war in our own soul so we can help people understand the war in their soul too. That's what really matters. That's the only thing that really matters because if we don't have understanding, we're not going to feed anybody with understanding. And if you look at all demonic spirits and demonic wisdom and fleshly influences, it can all be wrapped up in 1 Corinthians 13. I acted like a child, thought like a child, spoke like a child. It's all right there. All the demonic activity of the flesh is there and demonic activity too. And if you just go into a school and watch kids interact with each other, you'll see all kinds of demonic activity, the only stuff that exists, the stuff kids do that are selfish, that don't understand their soul, that can't be their brother's keeper, right? So we were talking about being busy, 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 and judging everybody else, so everybody else can make us happy. <laughs> and, and all the things that people get involved in, to deflect from their own soul. That is a huge problem for a lot of people. And so what happens in that world is, I wanted to say something about that because one of Gene's, a guy that he knew in Fort Lauderdale maybe 52 years ago or longer, 50, at least 50 years ago, 
this guy, when we stayed with him, was the pastor of a big church, and I think we might have stayed there for about a week. And they were forcing moral behavior on people. And a lot of Christians get involved in that, where Jesus said, if my kingdom were of this world, so would my servants fight. And so they were forcing people to not have abortions, right? And he said to them, if we force people to do what they want to do anyway, have we actually helped them at all? Because true help comes from having our own testimony, right? There's a way to overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb. We get forgiven. We have a testimony and we don't love our pride so we can give our testimony because we get wisdom and understanding and knowledge according to God's word to the enemies of our own soul. Then it's not forced morality. It's actually in, inner conversion. So there's a lot of taking the kingdom by force going on where people are actually trying to do all kinds of things to force morality on mankind. And in some ways, it's a real exercise in futility. Gene was talking about there are governments, there's agencies, there's a, a lot of governments should be enforcing laws, right? Right behavior, physical law towards immoral behavior belongs to the government because forcing people you haven't really converted their soul and it's kind of a deep subject but we were talking again about a movie that's going to come out and you can get really 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 depressed when you focus on all the evil of, of the world it becomes super overwhelming to watch the news to try to take over, you know, Judas's problem was he wanted Jesus to take power over the kingdom of the earth. It's why he sold him for 40, his life for 40 pieces of silver. Because he expected him to be a political activist and force his authority and rule on the earth. Now there's a time when that's gonna happen but not before all hell breaks loose. And if you read the Bible and the scriptures and stuff that Jesus said, men shall be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Evil times are coming, perilous times. You know, haters, despisers, can't keep a covenant. That's all going to happen and nobody's going to stop it. And I think even in the book of Revelation, maybe chapter six, it talks about the vials that are being poured out on the earth. That could actually even be happening right now. I'm no scholar in the book of Revelation by any means, but if we don't realize that we're not going to take over the kingdoms of the earth and we were never called to, you know, if you read the Bible, you'll realize that things are supposed to get worse. They're going to get worse. Jesus said they'd get worse. And for us to get involved way, way, way deep and all the evils of the world can be absolutely overwhelming. As a matter of fact, Gene gave me a scripture in Ecclesiastes that said, don't be wise about too much because you'll die young. You know, don't be self-righteous and don't be learning all about evil and good and trying to force morality again on people. Christians aren't really called to that. And it, you know, again, Jesus said, if my kingdom were of this world, so would my servants fight. It's enough for us. And that there, there's people called to do different jobs. I'm, I'm, uh, again, I'm not making a judgment about everybody's life here. We all each have our own little kingdom to take. And it starts with taking the kingdom in our own soul. So what was really cool today, I have a couple friends that... Have played the dumb card for a long time and been willfully stupid have actually had a dumb spirit because it's so much better to serve your belly to have your uh, mind set on earthly things and to take risks and be, rebel against god's authority right it's not actually easier <laughs> and we really had a good time talking because you know i think sometimes it takes people years to understand even what the real battle is to getting revelation between the flesh and the spirit in your own soul so you don't dish out the law so you can actually be your brother's keeper because if we don't know how to 
mothers don't know how to understand their children's problems, they'll just give them the law and despise them, right? They'll flatter them in their own conceit until their love is hateful. That's the tragedy of flattery. There's always, <laughs> people that are flatterers have a raging storm in them. And we've had a lot of deep conversations also about that parable, about the talents, because the talent is our own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And me handling and tasting and touching the words of life that help me in the battle in my own soul between the flesh and the spirit, right? So, Jesus said he gave everybody a gift. Everybody's been giving it, given a talent. To me, what I really think that means, in my own interpretation, again, is the talent is his Holy Spirit in me. Me and his Holy Spirit. All Christ is, he is within us. Hope of glory, living word. So is that word alive in me? His, is his living word alive in me because I'm actually handling and tasting and touching the words of life to overcome my fears, my unbelief, and my destructions? That's what we should be doing so we can help other people overcome their fears and their unbelief and their destructions. What do we have if a mom can't do that with a kid? All the mom will do, you know, and there's a scripture about that. Those that don't heed reproof and correction are not only in the path of life. Those that heed, they are the path of life to others. Those that neglect and refuse reproof and instruction go astray and they take everybody else down. So understanding our own soul and the battle between the flesh and the spirit in Romans 8 is the real key to life. Not taking over the governments of the earth. Not, there's a lot of things we can, not picking apart everybody else, examining everybody else. Even one of my, one of my friends I was talking about, all the people that I met, they get jealous and they just, you walk into their presence and they're picking apart everything about you. They're scanning everybody else outwardly, everything else outwardly, anything to avoid looking in the mirror. And Jesus actually just held up the mirror on men's souls and they put him to death for it. And the truth, our testimony, our own personal testimony can make people highly offended because we all want to say, I'm glad I'm not like them, right? So back to the, the again, the, the talents, you know, what does it say, you wicked and slothful servant? What does wickedness mean? Spiritual indifference. I do not want to make a judgment about the log in my own eye. I don't want to make a judgment about the flesh and the spirit in my own world. You wicked, you slothful, slothful. I don't want to understand my own soul. That's what really slothfulness is. I do not. I refuse to have this man Jesus rule over me. I do not want to understand my own soul. You wicked and slothful servant. All you do is murmur, weep. You weep and gnash about everything that comes up about the way you think about people, your children, your husband, your friends, the government, the Pope, the constantly weeping and gnashing people. Weeping and gnashing can be very, very, very subtle. There's a lot of ways people can weep and gnash and not even get it where I'm playing the part of the victim. And you know, if I don't understand princes, powers, and rulers of darkness because I don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit that helps us see past flesh and blood and, and hear past what we can hear and hear past what we can see, that's who Jesus is, his government, the invisible government in the hearts of men. We'll only be in a flesh and, flesh and blood battle and we'll be grumblers, murmurs, weepers, gnashers, blaming people for our problems, not having the ability to be our brother's keeper. So I want to end it with this because this is longer than I wanted it to go, but we can have a lot of life. Reproof and instruction are the way of life. You know, it's a joy to the just to do the right kind of ju judgment. I have friends that were dead, dead, dead in the war in their own soul. They were weepers and gnashers on their husbands, children, mothers, you know, whoever. 
But when they started down the path of self-examination, taking the log out of their eye, putting away the pointing of the finger, I have a continual feast with a few women now. I like more than ever. And you know what? There's a, there's a couple that are about ready to break loose out of the womb of, of, the, of the proverb, you know, getting understanding just for their own personal happiness <laughs> and staying a weeper and an asher because it's too hard to serve the Lord and I need to fight for my little relationship with my belly and my worldliness. I mean, I, there's, a, there's a few women I know that I think are on the verge of actually seeing where the real battle is and getting brave enough to go there. The, chair, the land where most don't go. The, the, what does it say? The, there's a book about it. The land less traveled. The looking into your own human soul so you can actually love your brother. Because most people are playing the part of Cain in the movie of their life. And if I, I hope this helps you. I know I've said a lot, I wanna stop now, but I pray that God would open your eyes. If you're like the joke that says, with the, with the three men of God that are in hell, that one says, once saved, always saved, why am I here? And the, and the Catholic priest says, I did service, er, I did mass every single day. Why am I here? I did all my obligations and duties. I gave the sacrifice of Cain my whole life, my own righteousness. And the, the faith guy says, I'm not here. So we can all be a little bit like that. I'm not here. Once saved, always saved. You know, here's all my sacrifices, Lord. I got the sacrifice of Cain. Let me do my own thing, okay? Live for my own pleasure. I want to be my brother's keeper. But you can be your brother's keeper and you can get excited about getting wisdom and understanding to your own soul. It's a lot more fun than living for your belly in the world and taking risks in your rebellion, stubborn, self-willed, self-love, pleasure world. You can have a continual feast with the people of God. It's pretty cool. And it, the word of the Lord is very near you, even in your mouth. Amen.